Have you ever wondered what different types of energy make up the universe? No! No! Me neither. But in today's edition of Science Geeks, we are going to investigate the types of energy that surround us in our everyday lives. Energy all around us. What are the ten types of energy that make up this wonderful universe? Number one. Well, first on the list is sound energy. It's caused by vibrations, like in a loudspeaker, or the vocal cords from our voices. <laughs> Number two. Then, of course, is light energy, given out by all sorts of luminous objects, like light bulbs, for instance, all sorts of different types, TVs as well, and most importantly, it's given out by stars, like the sun. Any object that moves has kinetic energy. The faster the object moves, the more kinetic energy it has. One of the most important forms of energy is stored chemical energy. Chemical energy can be found in fossil fuels such as natural gas, coal or oil. Here we're using natural gas to provide the flame in our Bunsen burner. Batteries use chemical energy to make electricity. Barbecues use chemical energy in the form of charcoal to provide the heat. In fact, chemical energy is absolutely everywhere. It's in cars in the form of petrol to make them move. We even use it in power stations to make our electricity. But perhaps the most important is the chemical energy found in food. Yes, we live off chemical energy. Just as a candle gets its chemical energy from wax, we get ours from food. It enables us to run and sing and laugh and skip and jump. Unless you're a science geek, of course. Science geeks live off wax. Number five. One of the most common forms of energy in the universe is thermal energy, or heat. Posh people call thermal energy infrared radiation. Thermal infrared radiation is given out by all objects and that includes humans. This is why we show up so well on infrared cameras. Thermal radiation can also be very useful. It keeps us warm in winter. We even use it to cook with. Not only that, but invisible beams of heat energy are also used by remote controls to communicate with our televisions. Amazing! It's number 6. Magnetic energy is a very important type of energy. Magnets come in all shapes and sizes, from quite big ones like this, to really tiny ones like those in a compass. These little magnets align themselves with the Earth's own magnetic field. This allows us to navigate across the land and the seas. Magnetic energy has many uses apart from just messing around with chairs and stuff. We use it to stick tacky souvenirs into our fridges in the form of fridge magnets. Loudspeakers use magnetic energy to produce vibrations in the form of sound energy. Most importantly, huge magnets are spun around inside coils of wire in turbines. This produces our electrical energy in things like wind turbines and power stations. Yeah, electrical energy. That reminds me. Number seven. <laughs> we must not forget about electrical energy. Look at all the things we use it for. TVs! Freezers! Microwave! MP3 player! Electrical energy also produces powerful bolts of lightning. Number 8! Nuclear energy is the energy found at the centre of an atom. And guess what? The centre of an atom is called its nucleus. The nucleus is made up of protons and neutrons. The little green things orbiting round are negatively charged electrons. They stay there because the protons have a positive charge. The energy stored within the nucleus though is absolutely tremendous. 
The Sun itself and all the other stars in the universe are powered by nuclear energy. Man himself has harnessed the power of the nucleus by using it to make electricity in nuclear power stations. And we also use it for more sinister ends in nuclear weapons. And now for something slightly less depressing. But only slightly. No. We give an object elastic potential energy when we stretch it, like a spring. Or an elastic band. It's called potential energy because the energy is stored. Let's look at this in a little more detail. When I stretch back the sling on this catapult, the elastic potential is stored in the sling. That's why we call it potential energy. Potential energy means it's stored. Now I can release this energy by stretching it. It's held at the moment and then I'm going to release the energy. Here goes. Ah! Sorry. Yes, the potential energy was released as kinetic energy. Okay, the potential energy changed into kinetic energy. Told you to wear your safety glasses, didn't I? Just to emphasize again, all the elastic potential energy turned into kinetic energy when I released the catapult. You see, that's the point about energy. You can't just get rid of it or destroy it. So it's always got to change from one type of energy to another. What is it, boys? Energy cannot be created or destroyed. It can only change from one form to another. Let me demonstrate again. <laughs> Let's start running, lads. <laughs> So you see, the potential energy that I had stored in there turned into kinetic energy and uh, heat and sound as well when it hit him. It was a good shot that, wasn't it? <laughs> hey, yeah. hey, don't know where you're off now. Oh no, no. Oh yeah. Oh no. Oh no, yeah. No, no, no. No! Please note that the science geeks used in our experiments are genetically engineered and feel no pain. If they're damaged, we simply grow another one. It's either that or we use cute furry animals. What would you prefer? Another type of potential energy is gravitational potential energy. It's very easy to give an object gravitational potential energy. You quite simply lift it up. Any object that moves upwards gains gravitational potential energy. You can gain it climbing upstairs or standing on top of a mountain. If you really want to gain a lot of gravitational potential energy, you need to go up in a plane. The higher you are off the ground, the more gravitational potential energy you have. Fairground rides are excellent places to gain gravitational potential energy. However, you need to be prepared to lose it quite quickly as well. Now for a quick experiment to show how gravitational potential energy can be changed into other forms of energy. I took some of my lab geeks up to the top of a very high fire escape. If I frame one over the edge, I could test out my theory. Come on, over no, the edge. I don't want it! Wanna do an experiment? Okay. Over, over, over. That's it, over. Right, at the moment his gravitational potential energy is stored. That's what potential means. But we're gonna get rid of it now by pushing him over the edge. Okay lads, push him over. Oi! Well, there goes that theory. Geeks can't fly. Still, it did show us that the gravitational potential energy had changed into another form of energy. But what type? I think it changes into sound energy because he screams. I think that is kinetic energy because he is moving. I think he needs an ambulance. Which one do you think is the truth? You've got ten seconds. That's correct. The answer is B. To give something gravitational potential energy, all you've got to do is lift it up. It's stored potential energy. If you want to give it more, you lift it higher. And to get rid of the gravitational potential energy, yeah. we release it. It becomes kinetic. Dead easy to remember, isn't it? Right, that'll do it for today, you lot. In your cupboards, come on. Come on, back in your cupboards, back along. Oh,